Whatever. Are we ready? Hello, I'm Steve Townsend here today with Blake Bruning and uh, another in our continuing series of uh, videos geared towards uh, whip makers uh, that are getting new to the hobby slash trade. Um, and today's video is not uh, so much really, I guess, advice, but uh, just a topic that comes up from time to time, you know, um, is the morality of using the skin of an animal to make a whip. And in particular, we use kangaroo uh, almost exclusively. I mean, by that, I mean every braided layer in a whip is kangaroo. The only thing we use cowhide for would be the cores and bolsters. And then there's two animals that skins are being used. Right. But yeah, you get you get into a lot of times. Eventually, it comes up. It seems now and then with someone, and they're all, you know, how it's just a bad, horrible thing that they're using these kangaroos for their skin, and because kangaroos are kind of cute, you know, and everybody knows that. The joeys are right, but uh, uh, what, what you got to know is like kangaroos in Australia um, are a complete nuisance, and they are. The, you know, there are areas in Australia that are just overrun with kangaroos and they destroy. And, that, and that's the mostly of the crops. central part of Australia, which all the fires that came on recently are more on the edge. And, and uh, but all the, the stuff in the most of the mainland wasn't had a problem. And so all the mainland is where actually is where all the kangaroos that get hunted are at. They're not the ones that are on that edge, actually. But uh, yeah, it, it isn't it isn't like these kangaroo are being killed for their skins and left for the corpses to rot, you know, there, there's other uses for other parts of the animal in Australia, there, there's a market for eating kangaroo meat. Uh, yeah, you know, like we, we would be like shocked to hear, hey, we're going to have some kangaroo stew, you know, and, and you know, and it, you know, uh, my, my, my wife's grandfather was, uh, went to World War II, became a medic, and he was, uh, I think he was 16 years old or 15, he lied about his age. <laughs> He became a medic. He walked all the way from one shore to a liberated concentration camp. And, uh, <clears throat> so, oh, shoot. Yeah, okay, that's it. So, here's why I went to him. I was shocked to find this out. He lives in southern Indiana. Now, he, he's uh, 95 years old now or whatever. Okay. Anyways, and he talked about growing up on the farm. Cause, and then we, we go out to his place sometimes, and it just recently got plumbing 15 years ago. But he lived his whole life out there in this place. Uh, and uh, we, he was talking about how he got by because he had a family and stuff and why he went to the war. And he was just saying, well, we used to catch animals. And I'm like, what well, you catch? Well, he'd talk about his snares or things like that. I'm like, can you teach me to make a snare? He's like, oh, I don't. He's like, I, he has, I, I'm kind of imitating. He was like, well, I don't really remember. I made all those snares. It's just when I was a kid, we'd make them. And you catch what you get. And he talked about eating possum or squirrel or, you know, you name what it is. You'd be like, no way, you're getting in a possum and stuff. It's like you'd catch whatever you did. You had a large family and you, you literally weren't just what crops you had to catch whatever animal by. I mean, so they, any animal they caught, right. you know, if they could fish, they'd fish not. So, I mean, so I was a weird tangent, but my, my, you know, he did all that. And I heard that. I was shocked. Cause like my, you know, my dad one time teased me once and uh, apparently he hit a squirrel on the way home. And next thing I know, we wake up the next day and he's got this aluminum pan with it completely skinned and the whole squirrel just sitting there. So we just open it up one day, getting ready to get our, you know, our breakfast going on before school. <laughs> I don't know if he didn't mess with it, but he was planning on eating it. And I'm like, I never did it. So well, I killed it and I'd feel bad about it. I'm not going to waste it. And I was a shock, you know, you know, I was shocking. But it's like, like you said, you know, these animals aren't wasted. Right. You know, and that's a big one. You know, it's like they catch possum. First of all, the shock by you think you need a kangaroo would shock us. Well, they don't shock them. Places eat cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. Cats are the most overpopulated animal. That's why they also eat them. It's got to be some strange meat, but either way, <laughs> it's stretchy. But, 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 you know, to us, the, the kangaroo is shocking. I'm like, they'll also eat it. They don't just kill a kangaroo, skin it, and then toss a corpse. You right. know, it's, you know, it's like when we talk about Indians and how they lived off the land of buffalo, we're not shocked. Like, well, they would use every part of the skin. I mean, these animals are also getting used. You know, if you get a cow out of butcher, the skin's getting used for that cow. The, right. the meat's getting used. Still, everything is getting used. So, first of all, that's the worst thing. I don't think people understand. They, you know, they think they're getting shot and killed for one skin. Right. And it's like, no, that's just one of the multiple purposes of what gets done this animal. Right. So, I want to say, first of all, let's look at that. It's not wasted. You know, it's the whole animal's used, and people over there even have no problem eating them. So, let's ethnically look at the, the animal where they come from, and how they see that animal. <laughs> 
That's right. a good way to look at it. For this True. Now go on with the, with the next one. Well, I, you know, it's not like it's just some kind of rare animal, like a koala, that they're going out and taking its life so they can have something to make a whip out of. These things, you know, I've heard they outnumber people in Australia, and you can't, you know, they're literally just stomping crops and eating, you know, crops and fields of... of yeah, you can get, you get a license to hunt them there. Right. They have to get a license, you know, and then they also, you have a limit of how many get killed a year and they get trapped that just like they do here on deer season or whatever, America, you know, so they, they, you know, there's a limit and they get it and they all go to these companies. So. Yeah, I think there's a, I think you can only hunt them during the nighttime because I believe it in the daytime, I believe they're so, they're so docile and lethargic because of the heat, they just don't move and you can walk right up to them and shoot. Yeah. So you, you, you know, that's, you, that's a side story there, but, uh. Yeah, there, they, uh, you know, there are groups of kangaroo that are gathered in. Well, I don't know what you call a tribe of them. But. Well, they have these colons where they just they they'll gather them up and and for lack of a better word, exterminate them because they're just out of control. They are destroying tons mm -hmm. of crops. First of all, like imagine, okay, they are vermin. I I, I don't want to shock you with that, but they are considered vermin, like a rat. You know, like people use pet rats and cute. Todd Rex uses a pet rat. <laughs> you know, it's like they're, they're considered vermin to most people because what they will do to destroy, because if they kill all those crops, all your animals and your livestock are out because you're out and it's livestock. I mean, it, you don't understand what it is. Like they're cute and cuddly as a little joey, but if you ever had one grab you and hasn't been declawed and then they kick your stomach, they would slice open your insides like two blades and you'd be dead. <laughs> one kick to the stomach. Whoosh! <laughs> Looked like Wolverine got up in there. You know, it's like they're... And, then, and, you know, we've seen skins that are 105 decimeter, 115 Joe had on as well. We're talking an 8-foot rat that can jump like 15 feet tall or at least 10 to 12 feet tall and about 15 or 20 feet across. You can't build walls up like it's living dead out there or <laughs> walking dead. You can't just build walls up big enough to keep them out. Right. And, I mean, it, you can't do it. They just, you know, and then they, they come in in legions. So people go away. Like, I watch specials on this. I didn't just, you know, make this up. I have watched documentaries and on it. And it was shocking to see They'll just come home and a, a big group of these big guys are like, I've already found a way to cut through your screen door or call through it, and they're in your house. So you just walk in your house one day, and it's like, right. imagine deer. That, like, if I said you had a deer with a rat, in your, your living room and you walked in there and you're stuck in a house with a deer with a rack, you'd be like, he's going to stab me. Well, you don't think a koala will be bad because you watch old videos with them with boxing gloves and punching people. I'm like, well, they are declawed at the feet. They are, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, he can't kill a guy with one kick that way. You know, it's just, you know, and I imagine getting caught in a room like that with something that is more powerful and can bust through your glass window and jump so explosive it can jump like Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, they're not nice. Not, not friendly, not good. Not good to I'm not them. slamming kangaroo trying to make you hate them. I'm just saying, you know, they, they're, they not only destroy crops, they, they will. I mean, they're not trying to be a dingo taking your baby, but they, they will. Do, they're, 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 they're a menace. You know, yeah. people have no problem keeping them down so they're not running into urban areas. Yeah. That's kind of the real goal for the colony. And again, it's not like you're going out and just taking a koala out of its tree and killing, you know, your. They're, 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 it's like we had bears in Indiana. We had to kill all the bears, so you couldn't have a town. You worry about anyone walking outside without a bear mauling their kid because they're not indoors. <laughs> you know, you, you're not that it's that bad, but it's like you know, they're they're controlling the populations from yeah. where it would hurt the population more. There's plenty of space in the outback without people <laughs> for these kangaroos to live. I imagine it's probably hard to drive down certain highways without constantly the fear of hitting like, another kangaroo. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like a deer crossing. Yeah, yeah. just everywhere, but. Uh, aside from being a, a really pretty soft leather, it's the strongest leather tensile strength for thickness in the world, and it is very supple and flexible, and it makes perfect braided leather goods, so that's what we use. It, you can't, I would never braid a whip out of cowhide, because it, it, to get it as thin as I'd like to have it, it's just not going to have any strength. And you wouldn't be able to braid the whip tightly. That's tight. Yeah, anywhere so, there. When it, it's not as durable. Yeah, the kangaroo is just far superior. And so that's just one of the aspects of the usage of these animals that are being destroyed. And also saying that kangaroo is, you know, veg tanned or veg tanned and drum stuffed or is a good tanning to where it makes the skin right, yeah, strong. It's yeah. not a really crappy skin, you know. I mean, if it's a normal skin done well, it'll, it is made. Yeah, and you can buy kangaroo and tannages that are, that are not what you want and if you've got a kangaroo skin that's you know a really odd color and feels real stretchy and elastic that's probably not veg tan 
And so you can, just different tannages can affect the skin in different ways. So, you know, I don't mean to say that any kangaroo hide you get is just going to be unbelievably strong. But if tanned right, it, it is. Always get veg tanned or hopefully drum, I prefer drum stuff veg tanned, but you can't get all the exotic collars and drum stuff. You can only get what I call the natural collars, natural saddle, whiskey, brandy, black and red. And right. Red. But they're typically really good, really strong. You just got to be careful to cut around all your scratches and stuff, which you see, it's, re it's really kind of weird. I, I remember when I first got into it, you know, you kind of come face to face with the fact that this animal was alive. It was a living thing. I can see where its arms were. You can, can almost see, see some of its life, too. You can see how much damage from the flank sometimes if it got a lot of fight. Or a bullet hole. Bullet hole. Tick marks. You can see if it was somewhere where it was out in the wilderness so much it was covered in tick marks. I mean, right. they're not all covered in tick marks. You can kind of tell from the hive. Right. So, you know, we see that aspect of it. And it is unfortunate that something's dead. But at the same time, how many of us eat hamburgers every day, you know, and, and that, that, I don't need to even talk You may not want to go hunt. down that rabbit hole, first of all, but, uh, well, it, you know, you, but, 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 so, you know, so it's okay to not want kangaroo products to buy one. We're not trying to convince you to buy kangaroo or we're not trying to brainwash you to say, ha, get over your stuff. Like I'm just sharing our, you know, thoughts on it because I'll tell you what, I, you know, you may have a problem with it and we've had whip makers through the years that would have a problem with it. And they said, I just, it got confronted with me. I never thought about it. I realize what well, it's not kangaroo, but I'm contributing in a sense. But you're not, there's about a million of these skinned every year. <laughs> so him doing, you know, 50 of them is nothing in the bucket, you know. Yeah. But but either way, and he's like, I'm retired for this reason. I'm like, that's good. He had to make that choice. It's good for him. I'm not slamming that. That's good. That's you. That's good. But I will say this. If you have a kangaroo whip or you're a kangaroo whip maker, even if you're not a whip maker, you just have a kangaroo whip and you buy one from any of the other rep, you know, just good good whip makers. You just have any kangaroo product. You'll you'll be excited to share. I've seen this happen. You'll be excited to share that whip with a friend for the first time, and they're friends and they share a crack. It's no big deal. You share your friend, but then he takes to his girlfriend and shows his girlfriend off, and her first thing's what man, you're like kangaroo, and then they look at you like you killed a kangaroo and beat it with a club like a baby seal, mm -hmm. and, and you never thought about it. So I'm not really trying to say you need to get on a side of one. I'm just saying. The worst thing is, is you are now got deer and headlight syndrome where you're like, I never, like, you now have to deal with this weird thing where someone's taking it so deeply morally or ethically in their own head that they just, they're not trying to lash out. They're just shocked and appalled and you never had to think about it. And so you almost feel like, am I dirty? Am I wrong? Oh my gosh. Am I, I never thought about that. And and so I'm just saying, this is something good to hear and think about right. because you may or may not want to buy kangaroo after hearing this, or you may not want to make kangaroo or cow after hearing this. And, you know, we're not making any of these videos to make you be convinced that you were by anything we're sharing it for that one reason it's like you know you're going to come to this crossroad right so you know and that's where some people do probably make synthetic for different reasons it's like i would rather have a synthetic whip i don't feel there's the harming of too many plastic dolls sure. to make this or whatever right, right. but you know you got to keep that in mind you know and and you know, I, I had to come to my crossroads, and that's where I kind of found the information I got. I think Steve had a similar thing, and we all, we all come to that crossroads, and that's kind of what it is. And I don't really see too much of the problem with it. I, I don't really eat animals, but uh, I love bacon, so I'm a hypocrite because of bacon. It's the only meat I eat. I can't help bacon right now. Again. But, you know, so I'm a hypocrite. I don't say I'm a vegetarian, though, you know. And, uh, you know, and I got to live with that, though. I got to live with the fact that bacon, but, you know, it's... You know, I would be a hypocrite if I thought I wanted to be a vegetarian and then I wanted to make any sort of leather product. And then, you know, I would feel like a hypocrite, but I'm not that guy. And I'll tell you, if I ever decide to get rid of bacon and get compelled to be a vegan, I will, I will quit making whips for that reason. Because if I'm doing it ethically for one reason, I, I don't see how you could do both. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a but here's the thing. If you're going to swear off all leather products, you're going to realize a lot of kangaroo and all this other stuff, they're used to make your Nike t your Nike shoes. Mm -hmm. They're used to make purses, your Gucci, anything leather, uh, your car. Like the high leather in cars is kangaroo. Mm -hmm. It is not cow high. And you can get kangaroo jackets. You probably have parts of a belt or a strap on a blouse you bought. That's just a little leather strap. That's kangaroo. You know, it may not all be pleather, and you can work on that. But I'm just saying... You know, I had to think about that. I'm like, you know, well, what do we got to do now? Do you strip everything you've ever used and you can't buy certain products to get through your life now because you can't use leather? Some things you can and can't. There might be things in life, I don't know, but you may not be able to get by without leather. You know, you can buy Crocs. You know, I mean, I wouldn't say you can get to a good business meeting or want to jump off a building without something that isn't somehow built with more cushion that isn't a plastic thing, but I don't know. Maybe they make shoes good enough for free running and parkour. I don't know. You know, I guess it's building that up. But I'm just saying, it's like... I don't know if you could get through your whole life without somehow touching a leather in your life. Right. Right? To buy a piece of something with the leather, 
You know, so no matter what, in my opinion, I feel like even if you try to take a stand on that, you, you can do it to a huge degree. It's like, well, I still have trash, but I recycle as much as I can, but you can't recycle at all. So right. I guess it's, you know, that's something you just got to think about. I'm not telling you how to look at my scale or your scale. I'm just, I'm just saying it's like, it's all things, bridges we have to come to and figure out if we're going to cross it or feed the troll. Right. <laughs> Everybody back <laughs> brags about leather and carry your own. Or make oh, sure we yeah. let a goat go out first and carry a club and jump. Oh, okay. Jump over him. Hard to say. A lot of ways to get across that bridge is this troll on it. You don't have to feed the troll. You don't have to feed him yourself. We're going to figure it out. Set up a trap for him. I'd go head to head with him. I'd be clear. That, that troll needs to go down. People need to cross that bridge. Okay. But, you know, you got to cross it. you got to figure it out. So, I guess that's our take on the uh, ethics of Dude, troll wits. Oh, if there were trolls making. and there were troll skins, well, <laughs> I would wonder what kind of, that's it, you guys want to comment? We're not getting a lot of comments on the YouTube channel. What kind of leather do you think troll leather would be? What kind of leather would troll leather be? Would it be stronger than kangaroo? Would it be a stick like a bison? Because kangaroo is only about this thick. You know, bison going to be about that thick. Not all leather, even when you get it off, is this thick. I don't know. Would it be like as thick as an elephant? I mean, who's who's going to settle that debate, though? That's the question. You will, on the comment section on this video. All right. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> That's coming soon. Somebody is going to definitely sell this view. And it'll probably be somebody on the internet who is a troll. You know, the trollers. Right. We let troll around. The little troll might post about troll leather. And I'll probably start getting posters and shirts of me doing atrocious things to troll to get their leather to make whips. Mm -hmm. And I'll be cast out as a yeah. villain in the whip world now. Yeah, this murder. guy kills no troll murder. This guy kills trolls. This guy he makes troll whips. Get him. Do they have like heel knobs with real fuzzy? Well, they make good overlays. Troll doll hair. But for 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 like bolsters and kip, unicorn. Unicorn. Unicorn is the softest viable. You have to use the hair from the tail and mane of a unicorn. But you got to skin it at midnight <sighs> under a pale full moon. Pale cloudless sky. Moon. Maybe a little Critical. blood. Maybe one of the blood moons too. A little bit of that. It doesn't hurt. I don't think that's a prerequisite. No, no. It's pale and full. As long, as long as it's drum stuffed. Not yet. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day. And uh, if you watch more than one of these or this one, that's pretty impressive. Right. I, I thank you. I, I applaud and uh, I hope it was fun or funny. And, you know, we're just trying to give you topics that have come up that never get really talked about that often, except in group chats on different media like Facebook and every now and again someone would be like, I just found out kangaroo's a skin. <laughs> they kill a kangaroo for it. Uh -huh. What's wrong? You know, I can't do this. And then, you know, everybody, if it, like once every five years, they'll finally, everyone comes back out and kind of shares what they went through with their advice to help them out with it. It's like, hey, good for you if you don't want to do it. And, you know, just don't hate others that do, but you got to figure it out, you know I mean? All right. You got a book? You have any book that's, you know, back in the day, it was leather. Well, they're bound, you know. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Off again. Talk to you later. <laughs> See you next time.